You must have seen in the news that China is currently experiencing flooding. It is due to Typhoon Doxery, which made landfall in China in late July. As a result, it brought heavy rains to Beijing and the surrounding area. The aftermath of the typhoon's rain clouds has continued to bring rain to the region and has aggravated the flooding. The flooding in Beijing has caused widespread damage, with roads and bridges washed away, homes and businesses flooded, and people displaced. The amount of rainfall since day before yesterday, that is Saturday, broke many local records in Beijing and northern China. There is a river called Hai. This river's basin is experiencing the worst flooding caused by storms since 1963. The rain finally shifted to China's northeast, near its border with Russia and North Korea, where it is slowly coming to an end. Now, how did this all happen? What are the reasons and causes behind this flooding? So what happened is that in the last week of July, that is after 22nd till 28th, the South China Sea, especially this region, developed a low pressure system. In simple words, the temperature of the water in this region was comparatively warm. Actually, if you trace the path of this low pressure system, it started from the Pacific Ocean, because as you know, in the month of June and July, the equatorial region and more specifically the Pacific Ocean water gets warm. Now, due to this low pressure system located over the South China Sea, the water of the South China Sea got warmer and the air started rising. After that, it reached a certain height and started cooling, and then started condensing, forming clouds and rain. While all of this was happening, the warm, moist air from the ocean was drawn into the low pressure system, causing it to intensify. The typhoon then moved north, bringing heavy rains and strong winds to Taiwan and China. Even the Philippines witnessed the pressure of this typhoon. The name of this typhoon was given Doxuri. Doxuri is a Korean word that means strong and vigorous. It was chosen by the Korea Meteorological Administration. So, if at all this question comes in your exam, then do mention that Typhoon Doxuri was the first typhoon of the 2023 season in the Western North Pacific. The location is the Western North Pacific. As I was saying, Typhoon Doxuri started moving north, bringing heavy rains and strong winds to Taiwan and China. Now, if you see, this is Tropic of Cancer. The Tropic of Cancer is also called a subtropical zone. The southern part of China is located in the subtropical region. But the capital Beijing is located in the northern China plain. So if you see, it does not actually lie within the subtropical region. It actually lies in the temperate region. Now, if you look at the average annual temperature of southern China, which is in the subtropical region, it is around 18 degrees Celsius. And the hottest month is usually July, when the temperature is around 28 degrees Celsius. And the coldest month is January, where the temperature is around 10 degrees Celsius. Similarly, if you look at the average annual temperature in Beijing, which is a temperate zone, it is usually around 12 degrees Celsius, with the hottest month being July, where the temperature is around 26 degrees Celsius, and the coldest month is January, where the temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. And if you look at the average sea surface temperature in the South China Sea, at the time when Typhoon Doxery was forming, it was around 30 degrees Celsius. So this average sea surface temperature in South China Sea was enough to cause a low pressure system. The water of the South China Sea got warmer, and the air started rising. After that, it reached a certain height and started cooling and then started condensing, forming clouds and rain. And at an immediate distance, that is at the southern China region, subtropical region, where the temperature was comparatively similar. So the warm air from this region also intensified the storm and helped the storm rain clouds to move towards China's mainland. In simple words, the combination of warm sea surface temperature in the South China Sea and the warm temperatures in southern China created ideal conditions for the development and intensification of Typhoon Doxuri. Typhoon Doxuri reached Beijing on July 31st. It brought heavy rains and strong winds to Beijing, causing widespread flooding and damage. The flooding caused by Doxuri was the worst in Beijing in decades. And finally, the winds of Typhoon Doxuri reached the Russian border and Mongolia. The strongest winds were recorded in the northeastern part of China, where winds reached up to 170 km per hour. The winds also caused damage in Mongolia, where they uprooted trees and blew roofs of the building. The total cost of the damage caused by Typhoon Doxuri is still being estimated, but it is expected to be in billions of dollars. However, the storm's impact was severe in the capital city of Beijing. But then if you see, the winds did not cause as much damage in Mongolia as they did in China. Why? Because the terrain in Mongolia has more rugged mountains, which helped to break up the winds. 
whereas Beijing is located in a plain area. More specifically, the Juma River in Beijing was flooded. And by the way, if you are interested in learning how exactly a tropical cyclone functions, what is the mechanism and how it all happens, I have a video on this topic. I'll put the link to that video in the top right corner. In that video, I have explained everything in a simple graphical presentation. So watch that video and you will get to know everything. That's it then. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.